you're watching Telecom TV. My name is Martin Warwick. We're here in uh, San Francisco, in California, at a very noisy Intel Developer Forum, IDF 2014. There's music. There might even be dancing girls, for all, all I know. <laughs> and I'm with an old, an old friend, uh, Ricky Watts, who is now General Manager, SDN Solutions with Wind River. Ricky, great to see you again. Hello, Martin. Um, nice to see you as well. It is noisy, but we will do what we can. It is it, indeed. It shows it's real. There are people here. Yeah. There are 5,000 people here, all yeah. having a good time. And so will we. Yeah, so wonderful. Here we... I'm looking for the dancing girls, by the way. So. I'll let you know if they appear. <laughs> OK. Let's begin with SDN and NFV. Sure. We've seen them come from nowhere over the past couple of years. Now they dominate most of the talk in telecommunications and networking globally. How do you think SDN and FV are transforming the networking industry? And what are your customers' attitudes towards the technologies? Um, good question. Uh, SDN and NFV, as you say, they are relatively new technologies uh, that are coming through. Um, it's technologies that are really, at a basis, trying to take advantage of cloud-based computing. Um, NFV coming at it very much from a telecom-specific world, uh, which is my background. SDN coming at it from a data center world, but really the two technologies really have complements between them, but they both are needed to be successful. Our customers are looking at these technologies. Some are already implementing them, some are evaluating them. Customers want to understand a, a bit more about SDN and NFV. How is it going to impact their business? What do I need to be thinking about? What do I need to do? So those are the challenges and those are the questions that are coming to us in Wind River, because they know we're working both in SDN and NFV, and they're asking us, so what are you doing? How does that work for me? And then giving us some um, real use case scenarios in and around the things that they're doing and then making sure that we understand how we can apply SDN and NFV to those things. So it's, it's, it's an exciting time. Um, there's no doubt that these technologies are going to be successful. They're coming through. And it's really working with your individual customers to understand and match their requirements with when they want to introduce these technologies. Well, that brings me to the second part of my question, which is, what are your customers' plans then for testing and deploying SDN and NFV? Depends on the customers. Um, with, uh, from an SDN perspective, um, and I'll, I'll split the two a little bit, uh, if I may, SDN is a little bit more dynamic. Um, you know, you're talking data centers, um, and there are many uh, companies out there that are actually using SDN in their own environment. So companies such as Google, Facebook, and the other uh, traditional large companies that you would associate. So they're already using those types of technologies in their own deployments. So SDN is moving quite rapidly. Uh, the industry is moving around that. From an NFV perspective, NFV uh, customers or people who use NFV solutions, the telco operators, they're a little bit more uh, reserved, a little bit more careful. Remember, they're coming from that telecom background, Martin, where you know, they're looking at the types of solutions that they're putting out that are going to offer very, very high available services. You know, things that we take for granted, you know, calls that we can make, data that we can make every day. So those things can't go off. So they're working with us. They're evaluating the technology. They're putting it into their labs. Um, I would expect that you'll start to see uh, some early field trials going on between now and the end of the year and then looking to some more aggressive early deployments in small parts of the networks, probably throughout 2015. So Ricky, before we have a dance, um, <laughs> what benefits do SDN and NFV offer the customers? Uh, I mean, I think the, ben the, the benefit, I've got to listen to the music now, <laughs> so apologies for that. So. Right. <laughs> so, I, I think the benefits are, um, they, they look at it from a few things. Obviously, um, customers are trying to uh, look at new things like new services. Um, they need to look at increasing their revenue. So they've got two areas really. One is kind of what they call their operational activities and their cost, and then the ability to introduce new services. So SDN and NFE, can they rapidly introduce new services to the network? SDN, NFE, that allows them to do it. And also, the functionality and the, the cloud comes into it. So now the ability to actually provision these things without having to worry about huge investments in capital to be able to do that. So that's really what they're looking at. That's where the benefits are going to come from. From an OPEX perspective, and obviously new services that they're, they're going to introduce into the network. What about your company then? What about Wind River? What's the vision for the company for SGN and NFE? Uh, Wind River was very um, early to recognize what was going on in the industry. I mean, Wind River is a, um, you know, it's a tremendous company. 
um, it has a huge heritage in embedded software um, and obviously now as part of Intel and the Intel group, it gives us a really good stable foothold to, to look at the industry and what's happening, what's shaping. So we had a number of products in and around this transformation that was starting to happen already with our Wind River Linux, our virtualization profiles, etc. So we looked at this and said, hey, the industry is moving. We need to start moving as fast as we can. So we made some strategic investments. We have some great people and we brought in some top talent, um, you know, through acquisitions into the company. People who really understand the telecom market, you yeah. know, because you need that. You, you, you can't just walk into a customer and say, hey, I understand your business. Nice sentence, and you usually get laughed out of the room. Yeah. So you know, so we had to bring in some talent. So we brought in some really exceptional talent into the company that have built these types of platforms, and we've been using that and gaining what we call early mover advantage around SDN and NFT. So combining our, our capability, knowledge, bringing in people, and really de designing and building products that are really what we would call first mover advantage in the industry. Okay. Let's move on to open source. And a lot is regularly said about NFE in particular, and it's yep. being an open source initiative, open source technologies and so on, open standards. Do you find this to be the case or is that just hype? Uh, lovely, lovely question. Open source, one of my interesting questions at all times. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, there is a lot of open source um, activity around this um, area. And there are good reasons for that. Um, you need to get adoption and you need to get acceptance in as many people as you can in the market. And open source is a good way of doing that. So we embrace open source, we work with open source, and we also recognize the value that we can contribute in and around open source as well. You know, and that can be contributions in terms of adding to open source, or in areas particularly where we think, well, this is a, not necessarily something that needs to go in, it has a slight advantage for us. So I believe open source is very important for the industry. Uh, it's very important for all of the companies that are going into it. You've seen things such as Open Daylight and the NFE Foundation, Open yeah. NFE. They are embracing this. They want to get as many people involved and as many people as accepting, and we're part of that. And as I say, what we do is we recognize that we're a company that's come out of the open source world in our 30 years working on our distribution. So for us, it gives us a great advantage to take our knowledge and experience and add that into open source and obviously try in areas where we can differentiate as well. What about Wind River's product strategy for SDN and NFV? What are you doing? What, what, what's, what's the direction? How are you mapping it out? Okay, um, um, from an NFV perspective, um, we have been very active. I mentioned uh, in an earlier question that we've done some acquisition of um, Sultana. So we've been building a, uh, a platform. Um, we call it Titanium Cloud. Um, and it's a NFV platform built in and around that rich telecom heritage. So our, we've been spending a lot of time building that platform, getting that early mover advantage, working with our customers to show them what we're doing, allow them to experiment and work with the technology and of course embrace open source. So we have a very, very strong push towards the NFV market. At the same time, we've been working on SDN. Um, we've had a number of programs that we've been collaborating with Intel. Uh, on SDN and how to get SDN into the Intel platforms and have a software embed on top of that. And now what we're finding is bringing these two areas of focus together as we go forward allows us to give the advantages of NFE, you know, this uh, reliability, this six nines carrier grade that you want, and then bring in some of the flexibility around uh, SDN. Things such as open daylight controllers, orchestration, etc., service chaining, these areas. And you'll see some of that, I'm sure, in the event. So, our strategy is to take our assets, combine them with our heritage, and really keep that momentum going forward. And at the same time, we recognize if you're going to do anything at a platform, you've got to build an ecosystem. So, that's what Titanium Cloud is it's an ecosystem of partners that we validate and we work with so that when we go and talk to customers, we do a lot of the work that is, all, is going to be required. How to validate, how does uh, a third party component work with your platform? So again, so we're investing in our cloud base, we're investing in our technology, and we're combining our assets across the board, be it in our embedded history or SDN or anything. Let's talk for a moment then about your collaboration with Intel on the Intel Open Network Platform, the so-called Sunrise Trail, which is a, a good Western-sounding name. Um, <laughs> I have to wonder where that name came what, from. What, yes. what about, where do you, um, how, what's it like? What, what's your collaboration with them like and what are you doing? 
Uh, well, uh, it, it's great. We collaborate um, with an Intel business unit, uh, the CSIG business unit, with yep. the communications infrastructure group. Um, they bring platforms and requirements on their side, and we bring software expertise. So what we're doing is we're building this SDM platform, building a virtual uh, virtual machine platform with them, integrating technologies such as open daylight and service chain. So the collaboration is day-to-day -day into working with them, deciding what we want to build, and we use a, um, uh, a method of uh, doing build, uh, you know, which is agile. I'm sure you've heard of this, yes, where sir. we're continually iterating all of the time and working very quickly to adapt. So, you know, I think the, the relationship, the interworking with Intel, them bringing their state-of-the-art hardware to us and us bringing our software expertise, we're actually seeing a great deal of traction and hopefully you'll get a chance to see uh, the demo, which is in one of the booths today, and um, you can have a look at some of the exciting work we're doing as a team. Wind River Linux is a critical ingredient of Intel ONP. Why is that? It's a foundation. Um, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, to coin an analogy, before you build a house, you have to have foundations. So, you know, so Wind River Linux, it's, it's our heritage. Um, so it's a very important structural point for us. Everything grows from the Wind River, Wind River Linux base. And we have a tremendous expertise. So to us, it's, you know, it's a place that gives us a very solid foundation that we build anything on top, it becomes, and I'll use again another pun, it's earthquake proof, being that we're in, <laughs> in California, you know, and we had a recent earthquake. So we want something that's very reliable, well supported, supports the features and functionality that we're going to bring through in our platforms, and Wind River Linux enables us to do that. And of course, I have an army of engineers on Wind River Linux that I can call on if I have problems, how they apply to my platform. OK, well, I think it's time for us to go and have a lunchtime <laughs> boogie on down. I think so, you're right. <laughs> Ricky Watts, thanks very much indeed My pleasure. for struggling through that. Well done. Great to talk to you. And you. Good and to see to you again. <laughs> Thank you.